Scotch, pecan, fudge. So in a large saucepan we're going to put one and a half cups of brown sugar and one half of a large goose of butter. If you don't have geese measuring cups this would be a half a cup. And five ounces of evaporated milk. Evaporated milk is not sweetened condensed milk. It is not sweet. It's just milk that they've taken some of the water out of so it's more concentrated. And we're going to stir this over medium heat until the butter is melted. We're going to add one seven ounce jar of marshmallow cream. And I'm going to get the question of what if we can't find marshmallow cream? I have actually made this uh, similar fudge to this where I used just marshmallows. So I think if you were to use the equivalent in weight of marshmallows, I think it would be the, exactly the same thing. Because this is essentially marshmallows, it's just in a creamy form instead of them being solid and able to pick up with your fingers. Anyone want to lick the spoon? Okay, once this comes to a boil, we're going to boil it for about five minutes, stirring occasionally until a candy thermometer inserted in the mixture shows 234 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a candy thermometer, I will show you another way of checking that. Okay, one thing about using a candy thermometer, make sure that you're not, the end of it isn't touching the bottom of the pan. Because if it's touching the bottom of the pan, you're not getting a true reading of the, the temperature of the candy you're getting the, the, the heat from the element directly onto it so you're not going to get a true the true reading so just immerse it into about halfway into the mixture to get a reading here's the way to tell if your candy is ready if you don't have a candy thermometer you have some ice water here that's very cold and you're going to take a little bit of your mixture and just drop it into the bottom And when you take out one of the little, when you take out the candy, you'll have made a little ball. And this little ball, when you touch it, it'll be solid, but you can still flatten it. That's the consistency you want. You don't want it to be hard. Then we're going to add in one 11 ounce bag, which is about about 300 grams of butterscotch chips and stir these around until they're melted which won't take long at all and we're going to stir in one cup of pecans now this is called butterscotch pecan fudge but if you don't want the pecans you don't have to put them in, you'll just have butterscotch fudge stir those in then you need an 8 inch greased baking dish and we're going to pour the fudge mixture in there and we are going to let it stand for two hours or until firm if you want to speed that up you can put it in the refrigerator recipe doesn't call for this but I'm going to sprinkle some additional pecans over top. It's going to look nice. And I'm just going to just push them, just give them a little push so that they get stuck to the fudge. Because this is actually, you can see it's starting to set already. I'm touching it and it's not sticking to my finger at all. 
So we're just going to put, it's hot though, <laughs> I wouldn't want to stick my finger all the way in. And we are going to just push those pieces in on the top. This is a fantastic fudge. The butterscotch flavor is really nice with the pecans. It also is very, it has a nice texture at room temperature. It's not too hard, not too soft. It is really a really good fudge recipe. The only thing I would suggest differently from the recipe that I'm printing below is to line your cake pan with aluminum foil, grease the foil, and then put the fudge mixture in it. And then you just have to lift the foil out and slice it. It's a lot easier. Go ahead, give it a try.